Okay, so first, thank everyone for joining. Uh, this is a Couchbase webinar. So we are going to talk today. Maybe you, Gregor, you can go to the next one. We can show the agenda of today's talk. So we're going to talk about the number of use cases uh, that we see in the in the industry and uh, in the retail and e-commerce. And um, yeah, we're going to also talk about the technology stack that is behind it and also the case studies. And obviously, we're going to um, uh, leave a section for the questions and uh, some suggestion on what is possible to do next. So I would say let's have a look at the retail industry and uh, how it has changed in the last 40 years. So before the 80s, uh, we only had the shops, so physical shops, that is people going to stores and buying products. So the goals were essentially the same of today in the sense that Retailers were trying to increase revenue by maximizing sales and also create a better experience for the buyers. So how do the managers uh, get more ideas on how to do that? So essentially, exactly as we do it today. So on one side, obviously, by advertising their activity and um, on the other side, also by getting to know their customer needs and behavioral patterns. So yeah, what changed in the 90s? Maybe you can uh, obviously continue in the next slide. I mean, which anyway stays pretty much the same. So in the 90s, um, it was the way that retailers were doing this that changed. So um, with the wide use of internet, obviously internet before wasn't the norm uh, for every single person for nearly anything. And uh, the, the retailers were mainly advertising with, um, yeah, mass media such as TVs, newspapers, uh, physical events. And uh, they were being able also to study people's behavioral patterns with the market researches, psychology studies, and mainly by observing either directly in the stores or also with cameras. So that's how they were starting getting to know, have more insights about the behavioral patterns. So what changed was the way now managers were advertising and also collecting this data with the process of the, the progress of the digitalization in pretty much every industry. So the mass media started being um, online mass media and uh, also social media. So, and we could start also seeing uh, what is called the users generated content. So anyone could write anything and post nearly anything about uh, anything. And the physical shops started being also online shops. So before this happened, the manager used to apply changes in the physical stores, position things in specific places. And the base, this was based on where the people were spending most of the time and uh, what products they were either buying or also requesting. So with the technologies uh, used to build e-commerce platforms, um, it became also possible to actually add an addition, an additional channel and uh, study of the customer behaviors um, in a different way, basically. So with big data, it became basically possible to analyze the, every click of the customer and also what they were doing. So what they were looking at and um, also, it was possible to really get an insight on their interest and their shopping habits. So it became really, let's say, crucial to gain a more comprehensive view into these processes and also get these insights. And uh, this has also really helped businesses uh, better address the needs of the, the consumers. So there, are, there have actually been many studies that are saying that solutions such as real-time analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning are expected to really play an, increase, an increasingly important role in the future. So um, this really can, can help the retailers to optimize the marketing strategies, also improve the sales by cross-selling, upselling, and also create these... Um, a more positive experience for customers. So the point is that, let's say, these retail companies can really narrow down now the customer profile to 
to a very personalized need. So um, we all know that, that basically when we receive an advertisement in a website of things that we are not interested in, we really don't like it. We dislike it and we have a really bad experience. That's why we really want to see only things that are related to what is important for us. So today, retail, retailers have really got this um, a challenge that they need to really quickly and uh, a very in a very detailed way be able to identify what the customers actually want. So they're so called the know your customer, KYC, as they say in the States. So now it needs to be much more refined. So the customers really want to see what is important to them. And it's really data driven. So it's really based on um, the customer transaction history, uh, the shopping cart analysis, and also all these things related to loyalty programs, social media interactions, and so on. So, you know, with the big data analytics, we can predict uh, the trends. We can uh, really uh, understand what people are more interested in and uh, business can understand where to invest more. And uh, we can also increase the quality of the customer service and um, uh, other type of services related to retail. So I would say let's um, then have a look at uh, how basically businesses have been revolutionizing uh, the, their approach to, to doing business in retail. So let's we are going to see obviously with the presentation of Gregor and Sergio how the IT leaders have been using different tools to digitalize and uh, just make sure that, um, oh, the slides are gone. Um, and basically uh, make sure that they could um, stay in business because that's the thing. I mean, you either don't innovate or you are out of business. So this is the most important part. Actually, I mean, just for many people might know the famous philosopher, Charles Darwin. So Charles Darwin was saying this interesting quote that is uh, that is not really the strongest in nature that um, survives and is not even the most intelligent, but is actually the one that most adapt to change. So this is absolutely true also for companies in business. So they need to be able to adapt to change, not only to survive, but also to expand. So we can go actually to the next slide, I think. So let's now look at some of the tools that retailers can use to gain all this data from customers and also to get them to buy more so and have a more positive experience. So now customers can have profiles in websites. They can basically, they can look at products. They want to be able to look at products anywhere and anytime. So what are the customers doing? These are the questions. What are they looking at and at what time? How can I get them to have a more positive experience and engage more with the, my application so that they will buy more eventually? So how I can, can I create these incentives for the customer to engage more with me and make sure that their experience from you know, the lookup for products to ordering to also receiving them and collecting them is going to be a more positive experience? And this is why actually businesses have to heavily rely on the innovation that is executed in the by the IT department. So I think we can have a look at the next slide because this one is going to be discussed even more in details later. So yeah, so that's why the role of IT leaders is crucial. And it's because the people are now uh, practically, yeah, just the, uh, basically having access to applications that need to be performant, need to be um, engaging them constantly. And uh, it's all, it all comes down to a more positive experience for them. So businesses need to be able to really gain knowledge from all this great amount of data, from the big data, and also deliver applications that it got milliseconds response and um, basically allow you to get all this knowledge. 
I would say, yeah, obviously it's a new world and I believe we uh, should take this into account. So I think we can also go to the other slide, to the next one. Yeah, so this is mainly the point. It's important also to be able to develop efficiently and also uh, use basically for IT people to be able to use the skills that they already have and avoid what is called uh, data scroll. So the fact that you need to actually manage data in different systems. And um, this obviously might make even more challenging to actually get this information, get this data and um, basically manage them. And it's important also to be able to deploy your application anywhere, anytime. And um, this is absolutely crucial because uh, it, um, it's basically, there needs to be flexibility also in the deployment. Everything needs to be cost effective and it's needed to be able to pay as what you use or what you use and uh, have that flexibility to deploy on-premise, deploy in any cloud type of infrastructure and also spot among them in case you have got an hybrid type of strategy. So I would say we can actually move to also the next slide. Yeah, it's uh, mainly the point that uh, right now, the, um, as you can see, if you imagine the sales process as a funnel, so obviously in the top tier, we do have uh, the millions of interaction. This is usually what people get by advertisement and that's where you reach the masses. But then after we reach the masses, the point is how can I get to the second level, the real opportunities? How can I get people to interact with my applications and uh, get to engage and click hundreds of times, 1,000 of times? Because it's absolutely proven that now people are looking a lot more than what they're buying. So we need to really get the customers to look more and have a more positive interaction with the application. So we are going to be able to have more possibility of transactions. So we can see how strictly it's related. The, um, let's say the fact that uh, the positive experience and the business that can come from it. So, and that's why, you know, the relational databases uh, have been designed for transactions and they're great for that. At the same time, though, for anything that is related to that other part, the interaction, the, um, I would say the uh, advertisement, uh, online advertisement, social media, and all these things, that's where other type of databases like Couchbase have been designed for. So this is why usually good strategies today from retailers is actually to use both systems together. So... Yeah, in some cases, there are possibility of replacing and offloading data from relational database system. At the same time, it's uh, important to know that there are actually tools designed exactly to allow these quick and positive interactions with the application. So I would say we can probably go to the next slide. Yeah, maybe just briefly about Couchbase. Uh, Couchbase uh, was founded in California. In 2011, was uh, one of the pioneers and leaders of the NoSQL movement. So the not only SQL movement, and as we will see in the in Gregor's presentation, it is uh, it has created these uh, multifunctional database management platforms that really contain the most important functions distributed now in many tools out there. So in one unique solution, and that's why. I like to call Couchbase the Swiss Army knife in the database management system world. So, yeah, this is uh, just mainly, I think, important because uh, we people want to really be able to use applications all the time, also on their devices and anytime. So, and now there is also the possibility of automatizing many of the operations with the database as a service, as we will see. So we can go on the next slide. Now you might not know because uh, usually you don't really see the database when you're using an application, but basically Couchbase is the database behind many of the application that you are already using. And this application can be the ones from Tesco, eBay, Carrefour, Staples, Trendio, 
which is the Amazon in Turkey, and many others of this. So I would say we can go also to the next slide. Actually, that's the point. I mean, six of the 10 top e-commerce companies in the United States and seven of the 15 top e-commerce companies in Europe are currently using Couchbase for very mission-critical applications. Not talking about applications that are meaningless or non-critical. We're talking about applications that generate millions of revenue. So you can understand how important it is to, to use a database that is always available, always on, very performant, and really allows to guarantee that next level experience that the customers today are requiring. And the use cases, as my colleague Sergio will show, are very different. So anything related to shopping cart, product catalog, personalization, mobile wallet, loyalty programs, product reviews, click and collect. Actually, there is also instant messages, I would say. Instant messages is, uh, can be also chat box. So people might want to ask information about the service and want to interact with an operator or anyway, a, a bot or something. So that is why application like a database is like a couch base can really help in this sense. I, I think it's, um, we can now end it over to Gregor. You Gregor can proceed with the technical presentation and then we can continue with that. Over to you. All right. So let's talk about uh, the actual new customer. So what customers experience and uh, what they expect from um, the, the online shops. So the first one, always on and ready for anything. So you as a customer, you want to have 24-7 uh, availability. You want to shop at any time. It uh, needs to be available. The, the, the pricing should be um, updated and also the stock, everything should be there so that you are not in a situation that you later on get an email. Well, actually it wasn't in stock um, or you can't buy something um, if you would like to. Um, on the right side, we actually see um, what happens if you do it wrong, right? So Tesco did have a very big outage uh, at Black Friday and uh, they lost quite a lot of money because they couldn't sustain the business, right? So no one could uh, during this outage of the, the website buy something and it was due to the database being overloaded. Now, Tesco is one of our customers um, and they solved this issue. What they also solved is uh, basically the dynamic product catalog so that you know exactly at what time, how much is in stock and how much it costs. Also the prices change constantly um, depending on demand and also on competition, right? So you shouldn't be more expensive than competition because otherwise people compare and go everywhere else. Speed. This is the other thing customers expect. When you search for something, it needs to be fast. So usually you need some other solutions to make your database queries faster. For example, something in memory, um, network centric, not so much on disks. The good thing about Couchbase, this is all implemented in our platform. So you don't need multiple systems to actually have something in memory. We are built in memory. And this way we can guarantee extremely good um, your response times, also um, very good user experience for all kinds of filterings and searches you do. Personalization is another hot topic in the industry. Um, Carrefour did this, uh, for example. Um, they specifically have a lot of coupons and the reward systems. And the problem is they have to apply this in real time because they, the customers, they get scared away when they see like the default price um, and only at checkout, they see what actually they can reduce with their coupon. So here they see basically whenever they search something, is there a special um, coupon they have already in stock as a user and then can reuse it for this or buy two, get one free promotions because you are a certain kind of users, all these kind of things needed to be applied in, in real time. And this was a big challenge for them. With Couchbase, they could actually do implement this in, in four months. Omnichannel, 
another buzzword in the industry, um, keep the customers moving within the brand ecosystems. So as Andrea said, um, the landscape is changing. We don't only have like a, a off-site presence, it's also online stores, it's mobile apps. And uh, also Sergio will talk a bit later about the other use cases um, who go more into like a VR or digital experience where you um, can try on things digitally. The essential thing you want everyone to be here is be in your channel, right? So everything should be focused on your customer, no matter where he is. Um, the experience should be seamless for him. Innovations, again here, we don't know where the future is going. Well, a couple of weeks ago, you saw Apple announcing their VR headset, right? So new use cases are coming, right? You need to be... Um, ready for scaling maybe you get new products more customers so from the database side this needs to be handled also for innovations you never know if new use cases come in new data models new data sources will be applied and need to be mixed together to get a user experience that's the what the customers expect constantly evolution and that they get a good experience out of it so quick overview of Couchbase, what we do, how we do, and uh, we start with a simplistic overview. So if you think about the uh, retail use cases or any application, well, you have your application, which connects to a database, which runs on an infrastructure. Could be on-premise, could be in a cloud, could be anywhere. That's very simplistic because the reality actually is completely different. So you have many, many systems which you need to actually build these use cases. For example, a cache for a session storage, for shopping carts, for profiles and so on, which is fast. You want to see your results fast. You want to edit something fast. There you need something in memory, key value. Then you have uh, unstructured data. So you need a NoSQL database for um, your data models, which change constantly. You might know yourself, Fields are added to a data model constantly. Um, it's unstructured data, so you need something where you can just put it in. On the other side, relational databases, very well suited for transactions, um, for relations you can build, for structured data, which don't change so often. You need this system. You might want a query tool to query all of this at once and not each individual. Then full text search, also very important in the retail market, obviously. Because, well, if you want a white T-shirt in size L, you don't want to filter, right? You can just, in your, your natural language, type it into the search bar and you will find wh whatever you search for. Eventing. Um, yeah, if you have all of these systems, you really need something um, to connect all of them. Because they're each individual, they're not combined. Combining these, usually you need something like Kafka, or some ETL job to connect all of this. Of course, you want to have analytics, like uh, which user group buys what at what time and in what quantity to get better deals for these user groups to have targeted ads and so on. And last but not least, also the mobile experience. So people not only go to website, they have uh, the mobile app, they go in store and so on. So this usually is the type of um, systems you have. What I'm telling you now is everything you see here, you get in one platform, which is called Couchbase. So we are an, at heart actually an in-memory key value cache where we put basically SQL as query language on top. So that means memory plus the actual database, that's two system in one, and we combined the best of NoSQL with the best of relational databases. So everything you know from query language, SQL, like ANSI compliance, um, asset transactions, and so on, that's good part and it's good for a reason, but the problem with it is like, constantly schema changes, it's not designed to be in a cloud, it's uh, monolithic systems, 
This all you get with a NoSQL database, JSON document store, distributed, cloud native, everything combined with Couchbase. On top, we also have a, a third query possibility, full text search on the actual data. Then we have also our own eventing engine to connect everything and also to react to events. We have our, on our own analytics tool. So that allows you to have operational analytics in real time of the actual um, operational data without any influence of it. I come to that also later. And we have, have also a seamless integration for mobile phones and mobile devices to sync the data back and forth from the cloud to the uh, mobile devices all in one platform. So what do you save here? Complexity, only one system. You save money because you only have to store the data actually once. Because if you think about it, mostly the data is on each system the same, right? It's the same data set. So copying this costs money. Storing this costs money. Transfer of the data from system to system costs money. Um, complexity. You need to have um, engineers who are uh, trained on each of these systems. Also complexity. Multiple APIs, multiple upgrades to maintain. Security. There is a, a whole bunch of security to think about if you have 10 systems to make them all secure. This is all gone if you have just one system. So this is basically what Couchbase is. So in the previous slides, we saw basically the customer expectations, right? Deliver great experiences. It's your job to develop these, but we can help you with uh, deploy uh, effectively and deploy everywhere. So deploy effectively. How does Couchbase work behind the scenes? So basically a database on our side is distributed completely among all the data nodes. We evenly distribute it in 1,024 virtual buckets. So in this case, we have three nodes. So 1,024 divided by three is the amount of virtual buckets which are on each node. A single document you store is only ever on one node in one of the virtual buckets. The clue here, Couchbase doesn't have a central component. The logic lies within the cluster map, which is on the client side. So each SDK connecting to the cluster gets the cluster map with the information where is which we bucket. And based on the key together with the cluster map, this can be hashed to calculate on SDK side on which node the actual document is. So you can imagine it's great because it's auto balancing, it's auto sharding, and it knows where the data is. So you don't have to have multiple hops to actually gather the data. It's directly going to the right node. Huge benefit over traditional monolithic systems or you know, systems which have a central component. You might ask, okay, but what happens uh, if we have a failover, if it's only ever on one document? Well, and on, on one server, that's where the replicas come in. So the replicas make sure that the data is actually also synchronized to another node, but never on the same. And in this case, you see, well, we lost one. Doesn't matter, your app continues to work. That's the beauty about it the SDK will immediately get notified to not target the failed node, but to read from the replicas. So still you have your usual uh, interactions with the customer without him knowing anything. So we read from replica and for the um, restore state, you can just add another node, make it known to the system, the cluster map gets updated and then it will Delta recover from the replicas to have again the active layer and the replica layer. Once that's done, that's called rebalance. Everything works with the load as expected. So continuous replication, auto failover recovery. Also, this is great for upgrades because you can just add new nodes with the new version and then release the other ones. Continuous, always on reliability and so on. So that's the 
key of Couchbase, why we are so fast, because the client knows where to go, no central component, and the secret behind the availability. What else does that bring us? Um, for all the systems I showed you, for us, that's called services, right? So we store data, so it's the data service. We have SQL as query language, so we have query service and index service to actually index the data. Full text searches and service, eventing and analytics. The beauty of Couchbase is, and this is also unique, we can do multi-dimensional scaling. And this is called workload isolation. Each of the services can actually run on dedicated nodes. So that's great. If you just think about it, it saves you money again, because, well, if your data is not growing, also your indexes are not growing because they say the same. If you suddenly have more queries, you scale only the query service by either making bigger nodes or you add multiple new nodes. So you only scale what you need. That saves you quite a lot of money because all the other systems, they co-host everything on, on nodes. So why is it possible with Couchbase? Well, behind the things, we are a memory first architecture. So um, our streaming is memory to memory. You can imagine um, network and mm, the um, memory is 10 times faster than the fastest disk available on the market. And the fastest one is quite expensive. So it's quite cheap to have multiple nodes interconnected via network, via memory to memory streaming. The protocol we use is called database change protocol. We developed that ourselves. And basically for each mutation we have in the data, like insert, update, delete, the changes is streamed to all nodes at once. So scaling is easy. The more nodes we have, doesn't matter. They are all getting the changes, scaling in, scaling out. They're all updated. This is the other secret why Couchbase is so performant, scalable, and available. What does the stream also um, enable us to do. This is called cross data center application, which is also usually very challenging and not a lot of databases can do that. And we can do it the easiest because the stream you saw is within a cluster, all the changes. What we can do additionally, we forward the complete stream to another data center, um, either unidirectional, bidirectional. So this makes us um, it makes it possible to have different data centers as disaster recovery, for example, as different local groups to serve local markets, like in Europe, in the US or in Asia. So this makes it easier to have business continuity, but also serve local markets with different uh, data, for example, or have rings and stars for cloud and edge um, deployments, just like we see here in mobile. Because what I also said, well, we have the mobile service. The streaming architecture also allows us to stream the data to a mobile device. So then it gets it in almost real time, gets updated when something changes. So no um, polling for changes is basically pushed because it's a stream. So Couchbase Mobile, what does the stack look like? So everything of the services I told you is basically the um, Couchbase server. For syncing to mobile components, we need the sync gateway. By the way, it takes care of the biggest problems in the market, which is delta syncs and read-write conflict resolution. Delta syncs, of course, um, we have limited bandwidth usually, so we only save and uh, sync what changed, not the whole thing. Um, Read-write conflict resolution is not an easy topic to solve. We did it out of the box here. Because if you have two clients editing or reading the same data set, that's a conflict. Usually very hard to, to solve on client side, on backend side. Um, this is already built in and we have this since um, 10 years. So how can you deploy this then? Well, either fully managed in Couchbase Capella. So that's our in the cloud, fully managed database as a service offering for Couchbase server and Sync Gateway but you can also self-manage it. 
So that means you can deploy it in your public cloud. You install the software, you maintain it yourself, private cloud, um, also edge deployments. If you've seen that, that's a new trend that uh, the cloud providers go more and more to the edge, like in a local zone, Munich, for example, Frankfurt, instead of like the big data centers and completely on premise, you can also deploy it in your retail stores, like some of our customers do. The big difference here is we have no difference in our code between actually um, the cloud version and on-premise. That's a huge difference. A lot of vendors go cloud only, so you're having no on-premise any longer. So here again, database as a service or self-managed, that's how you can deploy. Develop efficiently, also a big topic. Why? Because you want to leverage your skills, what you have. And this is what I said, we combine JSON documents with relational. So all the tables and the joins and everything you know already, we combined in one system. So under the hood, it's an OSQL system. So no schema enforcement, no tables but logical containers, which look like a table from query perspective, 10 different programming language and so on. So the familiarity you know from SQL with all the benefits of JSON. And this is how it looks like. This insert statement obviously looks a bit different from what you would expect, but well, fair enough, we do store JSON. So the insert also needs to look like JSON. In terms of get or update, here again, it's the table notation, but behind the scenes, it's completely flexible and open. But the, how do you query it is exactly the same like you, you know before. 99% of the actual statements are the same. Asset transactions, that's very important because it comes from the relational world, which means basically if you have a financial transaction from A to B, you want to make sure that it's um, um, taken off the initial account and put on the other account. Only commit once A and B has been done. So very important. It's a tricky topic in a completely distributed world, but we even have a patent for this and we solve this issue as well. So everything you know from relational, we can do it as well. Best thing, one single API, right? Retrieving data, querying, analytics, index, full text search, one SDK, one API, not multiple SDKs you have to control, you have to update just single API for the developer. It's easy to use, he can leverage the SQL skills he already knows and loves to, to be with us. Next part are the use cases and I hand over to my colleague Sergio. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, I'm going to go over a few customer examples for you. Um, and the first one is um, Louis Vuitton. Um, Louis Vuitton is probably a well-known French fashion and luxury company. They carry more than 400 luxury stores around the world, and they sell very exclusive and very expensive products. So... Just as a hint, a women's purse could cost up to 20,000 euros here. So um, one of the um, remarkable things of them, their store employees are not called salesmen, they are called client advisors. Yeah? Because they have a very, very um, sensitive and very close relationship to the customers and um, because they need to provide really excellent customer experience, especially with these prices. Um, they always need um, or they have to have uh, always access to their stocks, um, especially over their mobile devices. They carry around um, 70,000 SKUs and they um, approximately have around 150 to um, yeah, 150 new SKUs changes and product features and stuff like that up every, every day. You know, they are getting updates with on these mobile devices. <clears throat> And um, they had a former solution and with with massive thinking problems. And they had a very, um, the customership or the customer base they have is very demanding and, and 
um, if you imagine that, for example, someone in Paris is uh, reserving a very exclusive and very, very expensive, unique item, and at the same time in Munich as well, then um, um, they have to disappoint one of these customers. And with these thinking problems, they couldn't cope any longer, you know. Um, that was bad for their reputation and also bad for their relationship with their customers. So what they did is actually they developed a new app they the, that was based on Couchbase couch mobile feature. And they deployed this app within one day over 15,000 mobile devices. And then they achieved um, a syncing time, which was reduced by 90% um, in comparison to the old system. Um, the, the, the Louis Vuitton um, um, client advisors, they are now able to see their stock and to, to manage it um, in real time because of Couch Mobile. Additionally to that, the adoption of the app, um, the adoption rate of the app was, was doubled more or less. It's now over 80% while, it's, while it was uh, 40%, um, only 40% in, in, with the old system. Well, this is a very powerful example of, of Couchbase mobile solution. Next slide, please. The next one is Tommy Hilfiger. Um, Tommy Hilfiger is also a leading global fashion brand, turnover of $5 billion. Uh, and uh, the Europe uh, division founded special showrooms in 2015 for their retail customers. And what they did was to empower them um, with, with, um, with, with a complete entire digital way of ordering their collections. They installed high um, resolution uh, touch screens so that the customer was able to select his items and create uh, this, his personal seasonal orders. They had also massive um, issues to synchronize uh, the product catalog, um, especially when it came to collections and items which were, um, first of all, regional or uh, seasonal and promotional merchandise, as well as specialty collections. Um, Example, um, an Italian wears a jeans differently than a German or a Danish person, you know. All in all, they were not able to manage the system in a central way. Um, they were able to solve these issues when they selected Couchbase as the main data platform for their product catalog. And with Couchbase Mobile, they were able to synchronize their showroom and um, it, um, it, got consistency into, into this individual items and collections over all the regions and countries. They were actually um, able to provide a complete bespoke um, service process for, 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 for their customers, um, which resulted in, in a great customer experience. They also was managed to, to cut down the sample cost production by 80% through this concept. Um, also, the order time per customer, a regular customer and visit was, was four to five and a half hours um, before. Now it, turned, it, it was reduced by one to one and a half hours. That gives them also the possibility to serve more customers per day and to, to shorten the whole order cycle. And also uh, means that they're going into production way earlier. You know? Also a very powerful example for, for Couchbase. Um, next slide, please. Staples. <clears throat> Everyone knows Staples. It's a $22 billion uh, company, operates B2B, B2C, 4,000 stores worldwide. Um, Staples had serious problems to, to manage the complex uh, supply chain network. Um, they have distribution channels like retail, fulfillment centers, and high number of, of third-party vendors. Um, they carry multiple sources. And they, the old system they had carried multiple sources of inventory, um, complex business rules, um, high number of frequently uh, changing operational data. Um, they couldn't scale, and also, also the interactions were quite slow. Um, this led led to issues like like um, customers who ordered um, merchandise didn't get it delivered because it wasn't physically available. Others, uh, customer couldn't order it because it was physically there, but electronically it wasn't. So um, they implemented Couchbase and had actually a number, numerous benefits of it. 
Um, firstly, they simplified the entire management of the B2B catalog. And um, then uh, through its high scalability and high availability of Couchbase, they were able to, to handle the peaking, peak loads um, of their operations. And they were not uh, interrupted, especially when it came to critical periods, especially to high volume or high traffic uh, order placement. For example, like in Germany, when, when, when school year is starting and everything, everyone is buying the school stuff for the new year, you know. And also what they had is um, they, they improved the responsiveness and, and the availability of the e-commerce uh, pricing engine. Um, next, please. next slide, please. Decathlon, last example I want to talk about is a French sports retailer, um, operates in 45 countries and, and 1,400 stores worldwide. So a big player in that way. Um, they, they were not able to deliver um, constant, um, constant uh, data between their stores and also the e-commerce platform. Um, it was always problematic to, when it came to consistency across the countries they were operating in. Another key challenge was um, that they had to constantly change the database um, schema. The previous database, um, basically um, Oracle-based, Oracle required schema modifications. And every time they had to change something, um, that resulted in downtime. Um, um, Couchbase um, helped them with its schema-less approach. Um, Decathlon did not face this problem anymore because with Couchbase, you can easily adapt the data model, um, such as like adding new descriptions, new uh, article features, new article numbers, and you don't experience any application downtime anymore. Um, additionally to that, Decathlon uh, was also able to um, manage the ge geo distribution of the product catalog because they used uh, cross data replication, which is actually a feature for data recovery, uh, disaster recovery, recovery. but um, they had they switched it on in active, active mode. And so they, they uh, managed the whole geo distribution of the product data across their countries and the markets they are serving in. Um, so, that led to consistently replicated and synchronized data for them, for, for the shops and also for the e-commerce platform. And they use it also for disaster recovery. So um, next slide, please. These um, are four examples um, from Couchbase in, in, the, in the retail and e-commerce business, but we're not only serving these uh, verticals, we're also um serving more verticals than these um and we're present there and i don't know i don't want to talk about all the logos here um i would like just would like to mention that that we have um, a lot of customers who use couchbase as their main critical mission critical database and the fact that you see some very small customers here and very big ones is the fact that, that Couchbase is highly flexible and, and also very scalable. And um, with that, I'm going to switch over again to Andrea. Thank you, Sergio. Yeah, I would say that's an important part. So what is next? The next slide. Yeah, I think uh, what is important to, to say is simply, I mean, you can have access to these resources. We definitely highly suggest to download Couchbase and try it out. If uh, you are someone that is really hands-on or anyway suggest to people in your team that actually hands-on to try it out, Couchbase Enterprise can be downloaded for free and can be tested for free. And then you will only be required to get the license if you will decide to go into production with that. So there is also another possibility, which is to try out Couchbase Capella, the database and service version of Couchbase for 30 days. Also, that is a free trial. And um, yeah, obviously get access to the documentation, get in touch with us. So we did uh, share our contact details at the beginning. So please feel free to reach out to us either by phone or by uh, email. And um, yeah, I would say maybe we can take some time to actually get some questions. There have been some questions that have been asked. asked. 
So let's see. Also, I can see from Oliver. Can you explain how the cost of Capella compared to the server edition? Okay, so who would like to take this this one? Wanna go, Gregor, for that? Yeah, sure. So um, basically, the um, normal license for self-managed is just the software itself and uh, the maintenance and everything you need to do yourself, also the infrastructure cost. What you get basically is support and uh, any um, updated releases and support for that. And on the other side, Capella price is basically the license support and the infrastructure in one, right? So you have uh, the maintenance, the operations and everything combined in one bill. So you don't need to take care of this. So it's multiple things combined into one. Okay, great, thank you. So I can see there is another direct message. How can Couchbase help with the cutting costs? So I briefly mentioned already the uh, in the slide the complexity, right? So you can basically reduce the complexity of having different vendors, different licenses when you combine it into one. So if you, you think about it, um, Couchbase is memory plus the actual database. So you save already in your infrastructure cause the queries come out of memory. So it is faster. Theoretically, um, you can basically run on smaller nodes by achieving then the same results as you have right now with, with less hardware. So you do more with less at Couchbase because of the memory first architecture. So this is basically how we can cut your costs. So there is another one. So why would it be better to use Couchbase instead of a relational database for a retail application? Yeah, especially what we see nowadays in retail is that the yeah the data is constantly growing and the data models change very often. So with relational databases, you have the problems with schema changes and the scalability. They are designed as monoliths. So that means if you scale or you have to scale, you need to migrate to a bigger box. So this migration process is actually a downtime same as um, the, the schema change. So no SQL on the other side doesn't have this. It's completely distributed and it's designed to be available all the time, even by or during your scale, um, as well as having a flexible JSON data model, which can be changed on the fly by the developer without any um, change on the, the database side. So that's definitely the benefits when going from relational to um, no SQL database. Thank you. So let's see if there are other questions. Okay. All right. Seems like uh, been pretty clear then. Any other comment you said, Joe, that we were wrapping up? Anything else you would like to add? We are here basically for you. So that means um, just contact us. We help you with uh, any design decisions, with any further questions, with POCs, um, everything for free, right? So we're basically um, pre-sales and we're here to, to help you and support you in evaluating. Exactly. Um, and um, I would like to mention that for all the uh, participants um, and all the people who couldn't actually participate uh, they will get uh, a link for the recording for this uh, webinar and um, um, there you see our contact data and we're free for all further further next steps um, you want to do with us so thank you very much excellent all right thanks everyone thanks for joining this and uh, we will keep you updated about the recording Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.